Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you all are doing good. So today we are going to talk about classification of microorganisms on the basis of oxygen requirements. So let's start. So see, on the basis of oxygen requirements, we can classify microorganisms into five types. Okay. First is obligate aerob. Second, obligate anaerob. Third, facultative anaerob. Fourth, arrow tolerant anaerob and fifth, micro aerophiles, right? So these are the five types of microorganisms as per their oxygen requirements. Now we will try to understand each of these type one by one, right? So let's start from this obligate aerob. Obligate aerobes are actually those microorganisms which are completely dependent on oxygen for their growth. Means if oxygen is absent, then the growth of such microorganisms will not be favored. Now question comes why it is so that they are not able to grow in the absence of oxygen because we should know that they are having such kind of metabolic processes the operation or the functionality of which actually required oxygen as an important component. This is the reason that oxygen is an essential requirement for these microorganisms to grow. That's why obligate aerob are also called as strict aerobes, right? So strict aerob is the another term which is used for obligate aerobes. Now we are coming towards second type, obligate anaerob. So obligate anaerobes are those microorganisms which grow only in absence of oxygen. They are just opposite to obligate aerobes, right? And there are some anaerobes, obligate anaerobes, which are like this that they are even killed or inhibited by oxygen. So oxygen we can say is toxic to some of the obligate anaerobes, right? Now obligate anaerobe as they are also very much strict with regard to the absence of oxygen in their outer environment or in the external medium. That's why they are also called as strict anaerobe, right? Now we are coming towards the third type, facultative anaerobe. Facultative anaerobes are actually those microorganisms which don't require oxygen, right? But grow better in its presence. If oxygen is absent, they can easily grow, no issue. But if oxygen is present, even then they grow and they grow in a better way, right? So they are called as facultative anaerobe. Now we are coming towards fourth type, aerotolerant anaerobe. Aerotolerant anaerobes are actually those microorganisms which can grow equally in the presence as well as absence of oxygen. Whether oxygen is present or absent, still they can commence their growth, right? Now we are coming towards micro aerophiles. What are micro aerophiles? Micro aerophiles are those microorganisms which are having small amount of oxygen requirement as their name is indicating. Micro stands for small, right? So small amount of oxygen they are actually requiring when we compare it with the atmospheric oxygen level. So we all know atmospheric oxygen level is 21%. So when we compare with that, the requirement of micro aerophiles is only restricted to 2 to 10%, right? Means this is the range in which oxygen concentration is preferred by the, this group of microorganism and that is 2 to 10%, okay? So these are all five types of microorganisms on the basis of oxygen requirements. Now we are also going to have a look on some of the examples of each type, right? So obligate aerob if I talk about, then mycobacterium tuberculosis, which is a well-known cause of tuberculosis disease and micrococcus luteus. These are very good examples of strict aerobes or we can say obligate aerobes, right? Now let's see examples of obligate anaerob. Colostridium is one of the best example of obligate anaerob, right? Or strict anaerob. And uh, one species is there what I have mentioned here of Colostridium, Colostridium botulinum, which is the cause of botulism, right? In the same way, Colostridium titani, which is the cause of tetanus. Colostridium perfringens, which is the cause of what? Gas gangrene. So in this way, all species of Colostridium actually a type of anaerob, obligate anaerob, right? And if it, second example is Methanobacterium. Methanobacterium is actually a genera which is from Methanogens. Methanogens, we all know they are extremophiles or archibacteria, right? So they are also obligate anaerobe type of microbes, right? Now we are coming towards facultative anaerobe. Then we all are well aware of E. coli. E. coli is a very good example of facultative anaerobe. And in addition to this, Anterobacter aerogens, these both are the members of family Anterobacteriaceae, right? So they both are facultative anaerobes. Now let's see the examples of aerotolerant anaerobe. Streptococcus pyogens, which is the causal agent of septic sore throat, right? This is the example of aerotolerant anaerobe and in addition to this, Lactobacillus acidophilus, which is a well-known starter culture for production of fermented milk-based drink 
called as acidophilus milk right but in addition to this one more point i would like to add here in case of aero tolerant anaerobic category it is true that they can grow equally in the presence and absence of oxygen but their growth is sometimes more favored if carbon dioxide concentration is increased in the medium right if co2 level will be more then they they can grow much better and uh, in a much better way right now we are coming towards microaerophiles so let's see the examples campylobacter jejuni which is the causal agent of campylobacteriosis and helicobacter pylori which is a well known agent of gastric ulcers right so these all are examples of each type of category of microbes on the basis of oxygen requirements right now we are very much clear about all these microbes one uh, more topic we cover under this heading right what is that what is the laboratory test to study the oxygen requirements of bacteria if we are come up with an unknown microorganism or we can say an unknown bacteria in the uh, microbiology laboratory how we can know about the oxygen requirement of this particular bacteria so for that you should know there is one common test which is performed and the name of this test is fluid thioglycolate medium based test right which is called as a ftm ftm test right so ftm test is actually performed to study the oxygen requirement of a bacteria which can be unknown or which can be a newly isolated strain in our laboratory so what we actually do we take this medium named as ftm fluid thioglycolate medium and we inoculate the unknown bacteria about which we want to know whether it is obligate aerob and obligate anaerob facultative what type of bacteria it is on the basis of oxygen requirements so when we inoculate this type of bacteria in medium then different type of growth patterns are expected let's have a look on these growth patterns like bacteria can grow like this it can grow here on the upper upper layer of the medium right after inoculation or it can grow at the bottom side or it can grow in this way this type of growth pattern is also expected or it can grow like this so on the basis of observations what we actually draw after inoculation of unknown or newly isolated strain of bacteria into the ftm the growth pattern actually tells us that what kind of bacteria it is as per the oxygen requirement so if growth of bacteria as shown by these dots if it is only restricted in the topmost part of the medium means upper layer of the medium in the tube then we can say that yes this is obligate aerob because we know obligate aerob are strictly requiring oxygen to grow they cannot grow anywhere else in the tube because they are requiring high concentration of oxygen right and if growth is coming like this then we say that yes this is obligate anaerob because it is growing at the bottom right and if i talk about this type of growth pattern then answer will be facultative anaerob because they are growing better in oxygen presence but still they can grow without oxygen if bacteria of our interest is growing equally in the upper layer as well as in the uh, deeper layers then what we can say it is aero tolerant anaerob right and if growth pattern is coming like this then we can say this is micro aerophile in every book where you will study this topic you will find this picture but you should be clear about it which is actually not mentioned in many of the books of microbiology what is the basis behind it why we get this type of growth pattern then by performing the use of ftm right so let's understand the working principle of it so now uh, you see here i'll be covering working principles so we are very much clear we are going to use here fluid uh, thioglycolate medium right what we call as ftm so ftm if we talk about it is actually a reducing and differential medium right secondly if we note about its composition then you can observe it is this is listed out here right it is having nutrients some chemical ingredients indicator dye and agar right so if we talk about these three, three ingredients sodium thioglycolate thioglycolic acid alcestine these are actually the reducing agents right reducing agents which are present in ftm fluid thioglycolate medium right what kind of role actually these reducing agents play over here what is the function of these reducing agents right so let's see it actually reduce oxygen in the medium to the water whatever oxygen will be there we all know that oxygen remain dissolved in the water right in the microbiological medium but if the presence of these reducing agent will result in reduction of oxygen in the medium to water and in this way it will slow down the diffusion of the media oxygen throughout the medium let's make your understanding clear with the help of this picture suppose this is a tube of ftm now what we can observe that because of the presence of these reducing agent 
there will be a, a development of a kind of gradient of oxygen in the tube in the upper layer what will be there oxygen concentration will be high and then in the subsurface layer it will be less and when we will be coming deep down then what we can expect there will be no oxygen right so in this way we can say that there is a gradient of oxygen uh, just because of the presence of reducing agents in this medium in what is added in the in the tube so oxygen concentration will be high in the upper part of the tube and it will be low or we can say absent in the bottom part of the tube one more point you should uh, be clear about it here that the top one third part of the tube is actually restricted to the uh, the presence of oxygen okay in the bottom part there will be no oxygen right in such a way this uh, this test has been designed by making the use of thioglycolate with special type of reducing agents added in it right so now if this type of oxygen gradient has formed what we can expect here that different layers having different concentrations of oxygen in the medium they will be now occupied by specific group of bacteria like upper layer if i talk about this will be having more oxygen so it will be occupied by obligate anaerobes bottom part here there will be no oxygen right so here obligate anaerobes will be favored topmost part upper layer as well as throughout the medium of course it will provide favorable conditions for facultative anaerobe right and if i talk about aero tolerant anaerobe aero tolerant anaerobe can grow equally in the presence as well as in the absence of oxygen we know so they will grow there and micro aerophiles if i talk about they will grow in the subsurface layer where oxygen concentration will be actually less as compared to the upper layer which will be near around 2 to 10% range in that particular range what is actually required by micro aerophiles right so i hope this is now clear to you all what is the basis of using this ftm right in order to know the requirements of an unknown bacteria or we can say newly isolated bacteria to know about its oxygen requirement right another important point i would like to make you clear here sometimes in ftm an indicator dye is also added right that in indicator dye can sometimes uh, be methylene blue in some laboratories and in other laboratories they can go for using resazurin right so these two dyes are also used as as an indicator dye indicator for what so they actually provides visual indication of the presence of oxygen where oxygen will be more there these dyes will be giving us some kind of color and where oxygen level will be less then the color of the dye will be somewhat different so let's see uh, what kind of color color based observations these dyes will be giving us if we are going to incorporate methylene blue in the ftm medium then of course if oxygen will be present in that part of the medium then the color of the dye will be blue if concentration of oxygen suppose here will be more then the blue color intensity will be more and of course as we will go down in the deep layers then this bluish coloration of the methylene blue its intensity will be less right because it depends directly on the presence of level of oxygen so on the basis of this color development if the in the ftm we can understand whether that oxygen gradient has established or not and in other case we can also go for using resazurin right resazurin is also a dye which is which will be giving in the same way pink color right so pink color will be more on the upper layer of the the medium and of course when the oxygen level will not be there then in that case it will be diminished so we can say absence of oxygen will result in no coloration of these dyes so these are the indicator dyes which are also incorporated in ftm just to visualize the concentration of oxygen in different layers of the medium right so i hope this is clear to you all and now we all are very much clear about obligate aerobes obligate anaerobes facultative anaerobe aero tolerant anaerobe and micro aerophiles right means all what are the types of microorganisms on the basis of oxygen requirements we have also covered their examples and we have also uh, studied the ftm based test which is routinely used in microbiology laboratory for unknown micro microbial cultures examination we can say bacterial cultures examination to determine their oxygen requirements right now one uh, question is there why different microorganisms have diverse oxygen requirement why it is so obligator of grow in the upper layer and micro aerophiles in subsurface layer so the answer of this question i'll be trying to give you in my next video so till then stay tuned i hope this content is really going to help you thank you so much keep watching